wait till I get the brand, dude. Well, that's a little musty, blue boy. I'm not going to give you that. Feed it to these other hogs, but I'm not going to give it to you. and see if that storekeeper's passed his house with that fresh sack of bran, will you? I can't. I've got my hands in the mincemeat. I'll tell Margie. Margie, your father went to the phone for Fred Kramer. Storekeeper, Grant. The worst don't happen, you make it happen. Oh, musty bran. We'll get you in the mincemeat. Here, hey, you. Hurry up there. Let, never mind that board. Go and get your bedding in there now. Come on, put in the nicest, softest straw you got. Because we've got a long way to haul him tonight. Hurry up now. Come on. <laughs> oh, what are you laughing about, young lady? Oh, Daddy. I wish you loved me and Wayne the way you do Blue Boy. Well, I, well, I'm not trying to get you two kids ready to try to win a prize at the big state fair, am I? Mr. Kramer said the storekeeper stopped at his place ten minutes ago and put water in his radiator. Margie? Yes, Mother? Come and help me with the pickles. I'm not hungry. Well, you gotta eat hog or no hog. You know I couldn't enjoy my meal more and this hog ain't been fed. <coughs> we'll be here pretty soon. I've only got two more places to stop to fill his radiator. In a hurry with hog feet for Abel Freak. quite a fair. One thing you want to watch out though for, Abel, don't let your hog get too good, because if he's the best hog, you'll never win. You have it third or fourth best, and your chances will be better. You mark my words. Hey, that's that, the best Hampshire boar that ever breathed right now. The judge is going to say so. You don't really expect to win, do you, with that? With that animated log, Ken? Hey, listen, you can... Say what you please about me, but don't you say anything about that hog, because I got faith in that hog. Yeah, that's why he won't win. You got faith in him, so he won't. Of course, you might win first prize, but if you do, something bad had happened to you. Have you ever thought of the risk you run, taking him way up there, 125 miles? Why, you, you might catch pneumonia. Might get hog cholera. You left out cyclones and earthquakes. Well, Wayne and Margie might bring something home with them that an earthquake couldn't shake loose. What do you mean? There's always fellas and gals hanging around, you know, to snatch up rich farmers, daughters, and sons. Wayne's got a girl. So had Henry VIII. Eight of them. But he always showed up at every state affair with a new one. No, you mark my words, Abel, there's compensation in this life. Now, Emerson says... Oh, I don't even know who Emerson is, and I don't care what Emerson says. I'll bet you that the hawk. Well, I'll, I'll bet you... I'll bet you five dollars that Blue Boy wins the first prize. I'll bet you nothing bad happens at the fair. We all have a good time and get back safe. I'll take that bet, and I'll add it to my fool fund. No, sir, you mark my words, Abel, that for every good, there's bad. And you find that out. Yeah, you're wrong about that. You're wrong about the weather, too. I bet you don't rain. What are you doing with these chains on here, then? They keep it from raining. Why leave them on? It won't rain. If I take them off, it will. Mother, do you want your name Mrs. Abel Frake or Mrs. Melissa Frake? Well, Melissa Frake, I guess. Abel's entering Blue Boy, and the judges might get him mixed with my mincemeat. Look, we the storekeeper talking about Henry VIII and Emerson. I don't care how many lady friends Henry VIII had. Couldn't hold a candle to Blue Boy. Something all called. 
Four pounds. What'll happen to him if Blue Boy doesn't win? You'll have to shoot him. Who, Blue Boy? No, your pa. Him standing out there talking to that storekeeper, me in here waiting for a box for my pickles. Not so good. Not so bad. Give me a bite, huh? Don't taste like Grandma's tasters. Well, I followed her recipe. And you left out some. Abel Frick, I'm not going to put liquor into my cooking. One more minced meat without brandy? That's sacrilegious. Well, Grandma said you'd turn over in a grave. And besides, the judges like a snifter now and then. Don't forget that, Mother. I hate to admit it, Ma. But youth is right this time. If you're going to leave out something and you want to win the prize, you better leave out the minced meat. Abel Frank, will you get me a box for my pickles? Answer the phone, Margie. Maybe Harry. I haven't finished with these labels. Hello, sir. Oh, Eleanor. Marty, go tell when Eleanor wants them. She's on the phone. Oh, pickles and minced meat. Oh, wait! He's down by the barn, honey. I thought somebody... I had one right here, and I guess it's gone. I'll get the one outdoors. I'll take a crack at that diamond bracelet. Wayne Frank, what in the world are you up to? And Mother's embroidery hoop. Oh, nothing. I'm just trying out a game. I was practicing. Hoopla. But I heard you talking. Well, I'd rather talk to myself than some people I know around here. I'll take that arm, you little cock, mister. And that diamond stick pin, mister. And that rope of pearls. So you were standing out there listening. Eavesdropping. No. I only came to tell you that Eleanor, your little sweetheart, is waiting on the phone for you. Yeah? You heard me. Bet she changed her mind about going to the fair with you. Huh? Oh, you two had a fight. Don't let that toy fella cut you out. Yeah, just listen to who's talking. How about your big milk can of a Harry Ware? He isn't mine. Getting so around here, a girl can't go out driving a few times with a fellow without her own folks thinking she's going to marry him. Uh-huh. What time did you get in last night from Harry Ware's automobile? I know very well what time it was. Don't judge others by yourself. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Please don't fight. I was only teasing. Oh, I'm not sore. Buddy. Sometimes, don't you feel like you'd like to go away somewhere and... Just raise hell. I don't know what you mean. 
Well, I guess you wouldn't farm a freight. Hello, Eleanor. Yeah. Oh, Bandal. Better change your dress and fix yourself up, honey. Harry will be here any minute. If you can find time to get away from his precious milk. For goodness sake, what's the matter with you, Margie? There's nothing the matter with me. Here's your box, Mom. I declare, I don't know what's getting into young people nowadays. When I was a girl, I didn't have so much trouble with my love affairs. you going to take your mince meat anyway. Yes. Anyway. Hi, Mars. Hello, Harry. I was afraid maybe you'd be gone. Sundown when it's cool. It's hot now, all right. I wish I could go with you. I thought I heard you, Harry. How are you, Mrs. Frey? Oh, we're on a swither to get away. Can't I help you do something? Oh, no, no. You stay and talk to Marge. Oh, you might stay to supper with us. I've had supper, thank you. Half at the table, Mother. No, no. You entertain Harry. I'll call you when it's ready. I bet you'll have a big time at the fair. Maybe. I wish I could go, but you see, I've got my milk to look after. Yes, I see. You have to look after your milk. Yes, but next spring it'll be different. Will it? Then it'll be Mr. and Mrs. Ware. Mr. and Mrs. Harry Ware. I'll have enough say by then. We can see a little bit of the world. I thought we'd drive up to Niagara Falls in my car, and then to New York, and maybe we could go down to Washington and see the cherry trees on our honeymoon. That would be a nice honeymoon. I'd almost marry you just to make the trip. Not just to make the trip, to be with me. But what if I don't marry you? Now look here, Margie. I have made a plan since you were that high. It hasn't included you. I've planned everything. But don't I have any say-so in it? Oh, of course you do. But still, the man has got to decide things. Oh, has he? Yes. And I want to decide right now. Now, come on. I want you to say yes. All right? I'm not going to say anything now. After you get back from the fair. Maybe. As soon as you get back, we'll start arranging things. Of course, there's some things a woman can do better than a man. I'm going to let you pick the spot where we're going to build a new house. What do you say? Uh, what's the opening now, you don't they? Then get out of there now. Gee, well. Press your back. Ah, just take it easy now, you know. He gets bigger every time I see it. Uh, come here, look, Marge. Well, I've got to go in now. I suppose you've got to go, too. So I have. Come on, Blue. He knows where he's going now. He's going to the fair now. Goodbye, Mrs. Frank. I hope you win the prize with your pickles. Thank you. Come and see us as soon as we get back. Oh, I will. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye.
about Blue Boy getting along, Wayne? Oh, he's all right, but he don't like the bumps. Oh, Lord. They miss all of them. Are you all right, Margie? Yes, Mother. Oh, hey, Mo. Where's your pickle? Right here between my feet. You all right? Guess so. Anyway, they'll have time to settle before the judges do. Everything's so quiet. Seems like we're the last people in the world. There's a light right over there. Somebody's up. Packing for the fair, I'll bet. <laughs> I've got a little cold. Mm -hmm. Must have caught it when I took down the washing in the rain Wednesday. Maybe we better stop by Pittsville and get some for us. Oh, never mind, it'll all be all right. I don't got to stop there anyhow. Get some water for Blue Boy. What you thinking about, Marty? Nothing. Wish we were there. Why did you take the big blanket and spread it back by the crate and lie down? Try to get some sleep. Sleep by that hall? No, thank you. Say, that's a special hog. Ain't everybody gets a chance to sleep alongside of a hog like that. Besides, he's been washed and curried, so I bet she's cleaner than any of us. Is that so? Yes, that's so. We've been washed, but we haven't been curried. Well, I don't like hogs. Maybe hogs don't like you. You don't hear Blue Boy get nothing raising any howl about you riding in his car, do you? Maybe Blue Boy's not particular, but I am. Abel! I forgot to lock the house. I locked it, Lou.
Well, he ain't sick, is he? No, he... He's had a long trip in here on truck. He's just resting. Oh, I thought he was sick. You were a spectacle. Bring you here to the fair. What do people think of you, anyhow? You're not sick. Nothing the ma nothing matter with you. You just quit, that's what you did. Just laid down on me. What does that for you to come get eat, Dad? <laughs> well, what's the matter with him? Oh, he'll be all right just as soon as he gets accustomed to his surroundings. You better come and eat. No. I'm not hungry. Oh, come on. Come get a cup of coffee. I'll stay here. Mm. I can't leave him now. Go ahead. Here, kid. Have these here. 
the watch ain't got no words in it. I'm oh, just going to find that it's a pocket. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. Step right up. I want some more hooks. Get away from that. Beat it. Throw them in and ring them out. Three rings for the dime. I'll take three, mister. Get away from me. Get away from me. All right, maybe give the little girl a chance to win a Cupid doll. Three rings will do it. Here's my dime. Listen, kid. I want to talk to you. All right. Now, listen. Do you know what I have to pay the state fair for this concession here? No, I don't know. It's more money than you'll ever see. Now, today, you practically ruined this stand. Ten cents. You took out three dollars in cash, and you made the people think my prizes ain't no good. Well, they're not. Say, listen, fella. Do you know I could have you put in jail for libel? Oh. Criminal libel. That's from 20 years maximum to three years minimum. All you have to do is call a policeman. They put you in jail right now. Yeah. Uh, overnight, anyway. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. Well, my father's an inspector of police, and I say they wouldn't. Look here, sex appeal. How did you happen to get into this? Oh, if that's what you think. Now, wait a minute. Listen, sister, I didn't mean anything. I saw the whole show. Now, if you want to stay open after today, you'll sell him all the hoops he wants. But I can't do it. He'd spoil the whole thing. Now, in the first place, I lose money on the prizes. In the second place, nobody will pitch for these. Here, they watch him. In the third place, he throws the prizes away when people see him close. They ain't so anxious to have them. Say, boy, you must be pretty good. No. Oh, well, not exactly. See, when I come up here last year, I was trying to get a pearl handle revolver. I spent all the money I had, eight dollars. And when I finally got the thing, it was a piece of pot metal with a couple of pieces of pearl stuck on the side. I wouldn't have minded that so much, but he kidded me in front of the crowd. I didn't like that. What's that got to do with it? Well, I went home and I fixed up a stand in the garage and I got some of my mother's embroidery hooks and I practiced. I practiced a little every evening and Saturdays and Sundays. I made up my mind I was going to come back here and make just as big a fool out of him as he made out of me. And you practiced all year just... I didn't show you anything. Here's your eight dollars. I know when I'm licked. You think it's all right to take it? What's the matter with it? Well, oh, is it honest? It's honest. Sister, I'm glad your pa's a policeman and not a burglar. Just for that crack, I'm not going to let him come back here for the rest of the fair. Thanks for them kind words. I, I don't know how to thank you. You know, you're entitled to well, part of this anyway. Silly. But you can buy me an orange aid. Oh, sure, anything you want. Say, it's a good thing your father's a policeman, isn't it? You didn't believe that. I'm not a wild one, and I'm not a king one. But my tendencies are good. I just do the things I want to do, if it don't hurt anyone. Well, I just got here this morning. What are you doing tonight? Oh, well, my sister wants me Oh, to... I might have known that anyone like you would be here with a dame. Oh, but she really is my sister. Of course, there is a girl I go around with back home, but she's not at the fair. Dear, honey, at exactly 8 o'clock tonight, I'll be by the platform inside the north gate between the midway and the grandstand. That is in case you want to see me again. Mother, have you seen Wayne? Honey, I'm too tired to see anything or anybody. It's the biggest fair I ever saw in all my life. Pickles, preserves, everything under the sun. I thought I'd never get my mince again. And Pete, walking around like bees in a hive. That Mrs. Metcalf has entered Ben's speech, too. I think she did it just out of spite to me. Just wait, you asked me to do something for you sometime. I'm asking you now. Will you let up and quit talking about it? I could have gone alone. I didn't ask you to take me. Well, why didn't you then? Well, we say you keep your promises. I didn't promise. You did so. I guess I know what you said. Oh. Children! Margie! Wait! Now you two stop. This is fair week. Everybody's going to have a good time and enjoy it if I have to follow them up then. Well, you see, Mom, I run into a fella, a, a fella I met up here last year, and we made a date to meet at the grandstand, and I'm late now. That's all right, son. You run right along. 
I'll take Margie with me. Oh, now, Margie, you know a boy has to go around and meet other fellows. Oh, I wish I hadn't come. Oh, I could just thank Harry for not go around. His precious milk cans are more important. Well, Harry's all right. We'll get along. I never want to... You can come with me to take your supper. What? Down with those hogs? Oh, now, Margie, why don't put some powder on your nose and fall by yourself? Or ride on the roller coaster will do you good. Wanna watch out, buddy? Her old man's an inspector of police. No, he isn't. Everybody goes and you'll certainly enjoy it. Let's go take it all in. Yes, that's if you care to go and right now is a splendid opportunity. Buy your tickets here and go right on up. You'll certainly enjoy it. All the way around and right back again for that one ten cent ticket. Here's the pay box.
You never read any of my Sunday articles, like, uh, oh, the Geneva Peace Conference that almost started a new war, or the Bolshevik farmers in the Corn Belt, or my interview with Mussolini. Did you write those? They were interesting. Well, I made them so. Well, I must go now. Now, wait a minute. Where are you from, pretty girl? Brunswick. I covered a murder there once. Do you happen to know the storekeeper? Of course. Hey, he's a character. I've interviewed a lot of brilliant men in my time, but I never met a guy like that almost missed my train listening to him. He's full of Dickens and Mark Twain, and does he know his Emerson? He and father's been friends for years. Emerson? No, the storekeeper. Now, you see, I know someone that knows your father, who knows you, who knows me. And that makes us old friends. Come on, let's have a lemonade on that. Oh, come on, Abel. It needn't take your appetite. Well, well, it took his. There, there's his supper over there, and the trough, and he ain't even touched it. Quit like that on me after I'd scrubbed you and dogged you all up. And you going... What's the matter? you've got in your pocket. Don't tell me you've been using my hairbrush on that hog. Abel Frank, that was your Christmas present to me. I just borrowed it and he was feeling so poor. The next thing I know, he'll be wearing my silk stockings. Say, did you ever go up in an airplane swing? Mm -hmm. That's right. I forgot you're from Brunswick. Come on, I'll take you right up in the clouds. But I ought to be going home. Oh, it's only 9 o'clock. That's a bit time for us. For us? Do you mean that? Sure. We live on a farm where we go to bed with the chickens. You live in the city. You're an actress. Trapeze artist. An actress. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Come on, I'm hungry as a bear, and I know the nicest place in town to eat. Up here, it doesn't seem like the same world. It isn't. We're going around in circles, just as they are on Earth. Only. They think they're getting somewhere. We know we're not. They're miserable. We're happy. 
But we must get back to work. So soon? Don't worry. I'll personally conduct you to the arms of your parents. Well, I'm afraid they wouldn't understand. I'd better go alone. Mm -hmm. Romantic. Oh, now that's the spirit. That's what the fair is for. 
You say something nice to me, and I'll do something nice for you. You pay the compliments, and I'll pay for the refreshments. You probably have a boy somewhere back home. I have a girl. Only she's going to marry someone else. So let's see the fair together like friends. Play around like friends, and well, when the time comes to part, we'll part friends. OK? OK, Pat. That's understood. Understood. Now, should we have a ride? Oh, I came to tell you I can't. Why not? Well, I've got to get up the exhibition hall. What's the matter? With my mother's pickles and mincemeat. They're being judged. Oh, well, they can't give them more than 30 days unless they've been guilty of a felony. <laughs> no, idiot. They're going to see if she has the death pickles or whether they know their mincemeat. Say, now, that ought to make a real feature story. Come on, let's see if they know their mincemeat. Oh, Pop, I'm afraid I... Oh, what's the matter? I'd better go alone. I'd have an awful time explaining you to Mother. All right. When do you think they'll have those pickles sentenced? Right, too. We could meet then. Meet my eye. I've got to go up there and get a feature story for my newspaper. How about Mrs. Frake's prize-winning pickles? But they might not win. Oh, they're going to win, all right. If you see me around, don't give yourself away. Oh, Pat, but I might. It'll be your fault. I'll see you afterwards. Unless you have a sudden stroke of total blindness. If I tell Mother I'm not coming to the tent for supper, do you suppose we could eat together someplace? Oh, Margie, our supper is practically ordered. They hardly tasted my sweet pickles. Those are my best ones. They don't have to taste much. They're experts. <laughs> Look, now they're judging the mince meat.
First prize to Mrs. Mrs. Melissa Freight of Brunswick. Second prize to Mrs. Edward Metcalf of Pittsville. First prize to Mrs. Melissa Freight of Brunswick. Second prize to Mrs. Edwin Metcalf of Pittsville. Three people. First prize to Mrs. Melissa Freight of Brunswick. Second prize to Mrs. Edwin Metcalf of Pittsville. Mother. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the judges have unanimously awarded the plaque of distinguished honor to the exceptional mincemeat of Mrs. Melissa Freight. Oh. I probably have hysterics right here. <laughs> the plaque will look nice in the kitchen. Oh, I've got the most that any woman can get in life. There's nothing left to come to the fair again for. Mother, aren't you happy? Oh, the fair will be fun if one had nothing at it. Stop. Stand right there. Oh, if you only had a jar of pickles for that arm. But never mind. Smile, please. Watch the birdie. Thank you. What in the world is the matter with that man? He wanted to get your picture for the paper. You're a famous woman. Margie, I'm going down to the tent. Sit down. I never realized what a strain it was to get what you wanted the worst possible way. Mother, do you mind if I don't go with you? I'd kind of like to look around and, and don't wait supper for me. I'm going to take an ocean to eat somewhere on the ground. You're not going to have supper with us? Oh, I'd just kind of like to run loose to while and see the fair as I find it. That's just the way I was when I was young. All right, honey. But come in at a decent hour. Thanks, Mother. <laughs> now, isn't that swell? She won all the prizes, had her picture taken. Ha. What did you say to those judges? Not a thing. Say, first race has already started. Come on, I got five dollars on Pissy B. It's a good place to see the finish. Up ah, at the post. There are. Is it over? Now, false start. They're calling him back. Isn't it exciting? You haven't seen anything yet. I know I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, turn around. Now, step in your elbows. Now, jump. Which horse is Tessie B? Number two. Oh, I see. I like the looks of the man driving. <laughs> the horse is the one that's got to do the running. <laughs> We got a beat. There they come. Come on, Betsy B. Come on. There you go. Come on. Oh. Run. Run. Come on. 
What's the matter, Margie? So much fun seeing Miss Dale with you. And now there's nothing to look forward to. Darling, we can see the fair again tomorrow. There's a first time for everything. You never can get it back just the same. Ever after. Schopenhauer, as we live all our lives in pain. Pain of wanting something. When we get it, we think that's enjoyment. It's not. It's just relief. I phoned the office from the grandstand. They're going to use your mother's picture. Mm, mother would be thrilled to death. It's awfully nice of you to do that, Pat. You don't know what it means. No. Everything and everybody seems so far away. Margie. Who is that young man back home? Does it matter? Really? No. Not really. Are you happy, Margie? Yes. Are you? Tonight I am. You're shivering. Are you cold? It is. Damp and it's getting late. Maybe we ought to go. The air's not damp. You're not cold. We're talking like fools about it. nothing we're thinking about. I love you, Margie. I love you. Do you love me? Yes, Pat. I love you. I never tasted a drop of liquor in my life. If I drink this, it's on your own responsibility. I don't know what in the world will happen to me. Oh, there's not enough in there that make you fight a policeman. All right. If you're willing to take a chance, I will. Say, how long does this stuff stay on your breath? I'll give you some orange peel before you go. Oh. isn't it? Yeah. I think I'll get into something more comfortable. Why don't you take off your coat? Oh, I ought to be getting back to camp. You know, I'd like you to meet my folks. They'd like you. I'd love to, Wayne. Say, why can't I take you to camp tomorrow noon for dinner? And all I gotta do is tell my mother there's one more coming. No, Wayne. I don't think we better plan that. Not for a while, anyway. Oh, that's beautiful on you, Emily. I'm glad you like it. I didn't suppose anyone could be so lovely. Ah, uh, today's the big day, my boy. 
This is the day you get the prize, boy. Here. Look at here. Let me look at you. Let me see your face here. Huh? Let me see. What is this? What is He'll outweigh you, but you'll outpoint him. Look, Mother, Blue Boy's already won. Says he's Blue Ribbon. That's yes, That's only the class of war. He's won in his class. He's getting him ready now to go in for the grand championship. Is he all right, Abel? No, he's fit as a feather. You think he'll win? You say, look, <laughs> I know why you want him to win. You know, if Blue Boy wins, that means I'll be fit to live with for another year. <laughs> Party. If Blue Boy was where my mincemeat is, I'd feel better. Say, if that hog was where your mincemeat is, there'd be some belly aches at the fair. Tamler Senior Champion Sal's Pavilion Number Two. They're going to judge them the same time as they judge us. I better get you all some seats here for the judges. Come on. Tamler Senior Champion Sal's Pavilion Number Two. Introducing Whirlwind, number 14. 
But where's the other contestant? Grace up, you don't look so sad. Brighten up, you. Come on. Where's Pa? Where is Pa? He ought to be here now. Wayne, why don't you go out and see if something pops up? Yeah, maybe I, I better. It's Colonel Sing Boo Boy! Number 1494, winner, Hampshire Age 4 class, contestant for Winship, owner, Mr. Raymond Free. What's the matter with Blue Boy? Yeah, what's the matter with him? He looks depressed about something. You're feeling better, ain't you? Huh? Say, that's fun. Say, that's fun. Huh? That's fun. Say, now, we should, we should have looked like that while ago when those judges was over here. Well, Frank, I want to present you with this ribbon. <laughs> and I want to congratulate you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that pretty? Frank, I want to congratulate you. The best hog won. Yeah, oh, Martin, you had a good hog, too. Thank I'll you, Abel. You had a dandy there. Hey, 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 look out, Blue Boy! Blue Boy! Hey! Here, here, Blue Boy! Ain't that a great likeness? Oh, it don't look a bit like you. Oh, I mean blue boy. You know what I bet? I bet your old ding will have a cartoon on this tomorrow. 
say, whoever wrote this thing must have been a friend of the family. Get this. And while from the grandstand, Mrs. Freight and her charming and talented and beautiful daughter, Marjorie Freight, don't say a word about you, Wayne. Well, Wayne disappeared so suddenly, nobody saw him. See, I felt awful about it, Dad. I thought when they gave you the ribbon, that's all there was to it. Gee, if I'd known they were going to give you a trophy and have a parade, I'd never have told that friend of mine I'd go to the show. The greatest hog raiser it ever was, and his own son, not there to see him get the trophy. Oh, that's all right, son. You'll see enough of me and the hog and the trophy all winter. You won't get a chance to see that show anymore. What are you going to do tonight, Wayne? Oh, nothing much. I told my friend I'd meet him and maybe go uptown later. Will you be out late? Well, it's our last night at the fair, and I thought maybe I might spend the night with him. Abel, do you see any reason why he shouldn't? I think he ought to pay room rent. Been sleeping with that fella for three nights. I bet you boys just fool around and don't get a wink of sleep. Why haven't you brought your friend here, uh, Wayne? I'd like to meet him. Oh, it's just just one thing and another. Uh, he's awful busy. Oh, go on. Get out of here. Enjoy yourself. All good things come to an end. Oh, well, goodbye, Mom. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Good night, son. What are you going to do tonight, Margie? Well, if Wayne's going to run all over the place, I think I'll look around the fair and see what's happening. After all, it's the last night, so don't expect me back until awfully, awfully late. Now, don't you stay out all night. You would know it if I did. Every night when I come home, you're sound asleep. I'll be back soon. Night, Daddy. Good night, huh? Hey, wait a minute here. Say, is it all right for you to be running around here by yourself? Well, I'm not a baby. I'm grown up. That's right. You have grown up. Into a wonderful girl. Everybody loves you. That's a new dress you got on, ain't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, you know, you the prettiest girl I've seen at this fair. You are, honey. <laughs> You're prettier. Well, darn it. A lot prettier than the moving picture actresses that just get paid for being pretty. <laughs> and you know what I think of you two, Dad? I think no, that no, you're no, 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 wait a minute. I know just what you think. You think that I raised the prettiest girl and the finest hog in this thing. <laughs> Hear what happened to that judge? What judge? Well, the judge, the judge is immense me. Well, what happened to him? Well, see, he had a kind of a miniature delirium treatment. Out of his head, and all he could talk about was mince me. They say you could smell apple brandy right on his breath. Oh, Abel Frank. Abel, what do you plan to do tonight? No, I don't know. I ain't gonna do nothing. You used to be glad enough to take me on the merry-go-round. Now, listen, I'm not gonna get on one of them little old hobby horses. Great big man like you, afraid of a hobby horse. You're gonna take me to that fair. Yeah, So are you. I didn't want to miss the chance of another minute. Tonight's the last night. 
like that one. The last ride, Pat. I don't know how to tell you how wonderful you are. You take life and brave it and enjoy it. And you're beautiful. Get along. I thought that first time I'd be killed, sure. And I didn't want to die. Anything so wonderful could happen to me. This is our last evening, Wayne. Mm, don't you believe it. We'll have lots more evenings together, all our lives. Don't think I'm going to let you slip away from me now. What's the matter, Emily? You're acting so strange. Have I done anything? No way. Well, then what is it? Wayne, this is our last night. We'll never see each other again. For heaven's sake, Emily, quit all this mysterious stuff and tell me what you're thinking of. You mean, you mean you don't love me? And here I've been thinking all the time that you were going to marry me. Of course, I was, I was taking that for granted. I'm sorry, Wayne. If I loved you when I first saw you as I do now, if I'd known how true and sweet you are, I'd never have brought us, you and me, to this. I do love you, Wayne. But I wouldn't marry you for anything in the world. Well, it's still early. If there's anything you'd like to do. Pat, you've never shown me your newspaper exhibit. Oh, I'd like you to see it, Margie. But it wouldn't do you any good to be seen there with me. Fact is, Margie, I haven't lived like a saint. Never felt I could be true to any one woman. Boys know that. If I took you down to the press tent and they saw you there with me, they'd say, in a certain way, oh, yes, first time I saw that girl, she was with Pat Gilbert. But if you marry me, there isn't anything they can say. Your life hasn't been very dull, has it, Pat? No, it hasn't. But if you still wish to see the exhibit... And I don't believe I do. Well, I've got a lot of things I'd like to say to you this last night. Would you care to take a drive outside the fairgrounds, uptown? If you want to. Ready? Pat, 
I can't do it. But is it because of the women I've known? Surely, Marge. That's Pat. Well, then, then what on earth? Pat. If you marry me, you'll tie yourself to one place and one woman all your life. You'd have to. I wouldn't stand for other women. Well, if I can't forget about other women and live only for you, if I can't settle down and be what you want me to be, then I'm, then I'm worse than I think I am. No more adventure, no more travel, just slaving on a paper you hate, and you say you hate it, till you're old. I've no intention of working on that paper until I'm old. I've always had better plans for myself, Margie. Well, I can see myself doing something bigger and more brilliant. Novels for magazines, plays for Broadway. We could live in Chicago, New York. Oh, but what will your friends in New York think of me? Well, the men would make love to you, and the women would hate you. Back in Brunswick, I'd be useful. I could run a house, and I'd have children who'd grow up like me. And live to bring more land into the family. Whose children? Whose children? You've had it hard for me to tell you, but there is someone back home. He's been in love with me always, all my life. Margie, do you mean to tell me that you love this man back home? It's just that he loves me. He'd always love me. Well, guess I better be taking you home. Shall we go? Had him with us. He, he enjoyed this. Who, oh, wait? No, blue boy. Ava, will you get your mind off of that? Hurry! Mine's off the hog now, Ma. If you'd like to go in, I'll. I don't care anything about it, but if you'd like to see it, I'll take you in. You want to? Hmm? Hmm? I say, I, it don't mean anything to me, but I mean, if you'd, if you'd like to go in, I'll, I'll take you in. You want to? Hmm? Sure. Fair's over. Yes. There's always a final curtain. Whether the ending be happy or tragic. Tomorrow, Margie? Tomorrow we're going home. Then this 
is the end? Well, how can I tell so soon? I love you, Pat. But sometimes you seem like something I'll wake up from. Well, I guess there's nothing more to say. Unless you say it. Give you a good swift kick in the slats. Yeah, and you tell him I'm going to drive faster, too. If you don't like it, he can lump it. No prima donna now. Hey there. 
Did you stop and see the world's greatest hog? No, he probably make me cry. Uh -huh. Come on up here and sit down. Make yourself at home. Hey, just a minute. I won your five dollar bet. We all went to the fair and we had a good time. We won a lot of prizes and got back home and nothing bad happened. Maybe something happened we don't know about. Hmm. Well, don't know about it, why well, it can't be very bad. Wayne looked happy. Did you have a good time, Margie? Yes, I, I had that. Margie. You better answer it. I just know it's Harris. Well, don't let it ring all day. Hi, Marcia. I'll answer. You know, Mother, I'll go. You better run. You'll get wet. Hello, everybody. It's raining. Congratulations, Mrs. Frake. Thank you, Harry. And you, too, Mr. Frake. This may look cool with everything off. Hello. Thank you. 